as is typical with me, I'm, I've always got a question when I do this kind of stuff. My first question today is going to be, did you know Jesus was a thief? Let me back up and start at the beginning here, and then we'll come back to this. Jesus didn't have to go to the cross. Jesus went to the cross on his own because he had, because it was his desire to do that for us, not because he had to go. Nobody could force him to go. In Luke 4, 28, he had been, with the, been in the synagogue teaching, and the people got mad at him. And it goes on to say, all the people of the synagogue were furious when they heard this, what he had said. They got up, they drove him out of the town, they took him to the brow, which is the edge of the town, uh, to, to the hill, which the town was built on, in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. Not a one of them put a finger on him. Why? I don't know whether he was invisible to them, whether they were frozen time and he was able to walk right by them, uh, whether they couldn't see him for some reason. I don't know how he did it, but they were eager to throw him over the cliff and he walked right through the crowd and walked, and walked on his way. So there was one example where God, or Jesus, we got away from something that could have happened to him. It wasn't his time to die. It was the main thing. When he was betrayed, when the soldiers came to get him, Peter cut the ear off of one of the soldiers. And Jesus had a statement back for Peter. He says, put your sword back in its place. Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think uh, do, uh, do you think I cannot call on my father? And he will at once send at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? At any time, Christ could have called on God, and he could have sent down 12 legions of angels. So Christ went to the cross because it was his place to do it. He, it was his destiny. It was what he was sent here for. He could have called on God at any time. Even while he was on the cross in the pain, he could have called on God and had the legions come down to take him away from the pain. But instead, he stayed there and died for us. Now, what do you think Satan was doing at this time? Satan was probably getting ready to throw a party. I mean, here he is. Satan had won, as far as he was concerned, the battle. And he was about ready to throw a party, Paul was like, I don't know, I, mean, I, I wasn't there myself, but I might ask Dave, you might know. Uh, but, yeah, Satan was probably ready to throw a party. Yet, three days later, Christ arose. What do you think Satan felt like then? Jesus was a thief. He stole Satan's joy. You see what I mean? Jesus stole Satan's joy. That's how Jesus was a thief. Paul wrote in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, he says, For I received what I pass unto you first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, that he was buried and he was raised on the third day according to Scripture, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. Christ rose on the third day. And that's what this whole Easter is about. That's why we're, that's what we celebrate today is Easter, because he rose on the third day. Now, when they had the Passover dinner, and we've read this probably thousands of times, but I'm going to read it one more time, because it's important. At the Passover dinner, Christ gave us communion. What we, what we call communion today. They didn't call communion then. It says, for I received the Lord, for I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it. 
in the remembrance of me. For whatever you eat, or for whatever you eat, this bread or drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So let's take out our bread. And remember that when you partake of this bread, you're remembering the death of Christ. Then we take the juice, because it is a reminder of the blood that was sacrificed for us. Let us pray. Dear me, Father, on this Easter Sunday, Father, we know there's a lot of people come to church on Easter Sunday, and Father, we hope that we just hope and pray that they hear a message that touches their heart. But Father, we know that Easter Sunday is not the only day we should remember you. That we should get together and remember you always. For you told us to. You've told us not to forsake the gathering together. And Father, we just thank you so much that we have places we can come to today in this country and still celebrate your life, celebrate what you've done for us, and celebrate the resurrection, which gave us the means to get in touch with God. And Father, we just thank you so much for what you have given us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.